In this video, we're going to look at how our users can curate and store a list of favorite items within our Flutterflow and Superbase apps. Right, so this came through a request uh, and just so happened that when the request came from in the comments, I was already working on something that was going to do this anyway. So I thought I might as well put the video together and put it out. So what I'll do, I'll show you what it does first before we go on to look at how it's put how it's done um, and this is obviously allow a user to click on the star favorite an item it goes into a favorites list uh, and then they can remove and add the favorites uh, from 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 the search they perform so yeah we'll, we'll go and look at it functioning and then we'll come back and look at all the custom actions uh, we've used to to get it to work so I'm going to use the job board example. If you remember the search database by keyword um, video, that did the same thing. Um, so that's what I'm going to use. And basically our user, click on the stars to favorite. And as you can see, we've already got some favorited. So anything gray, our user's favorited. So essentially we can add and remove the favorites just by clicking on the stars. And when we're added to the favorites, they go grey and that is our user having favorited an item it's it's that simple so then if the user then goes back to his dashboard or his or her dashboard then we've got the list of favorites there and if our user decides that he doesn't want to work for robo solutions in new york and then they'll come off and likewise he doesn't fancy new york at all he prefers the seaside and that one can go so that'll be his favorites there and if we go back into the search you'll see the only one that's favorited now is the san francisco one but our user he quite fancies being a drone pilot so he's going to favorite that one and then he goes back to his dashboard and then his drone pilot is is back in his favorites that's basically what it does so let's kind of look at the back end and obviously if the user logs out and logs back in these favorites will still be there because the way it's done so yeah we'll go back have a look in flutterflow and superbase and see what we've done to make this function so uh, this is going to work whatever you're doing if you've got a you know a store or you've got you know posts by individuals whatever it is you're doing this method will work and when i was thinking about it i thought of a number of ways that i could sort of solve the problem However, this is the way I went with. I'm sure there are, well, there are other ways, definitely. Uh, this may not be the most efficient, um, but it definitely works. So let's go into it and uh, see what we've done. Now, if we start off in Superbase. What we've got uh, in the users table, so in the public users table, we've got a list of integers uh, called favorites as one of the columns. And what happens is when the user clicks on favorite, it inserts a number, a random number into the favorites column. Now, in the, my instance, what I'm doing, so I've got this job board app and when an employer creates a new post, um, what happens is they go through a sort of this is the second part of it the first part of it is post job one they fill in some details click next fill in the next lot of details click next and then they get to preview it so there's preview job and then you got edit or post so uh, if they post it what happens is it generates a six digit random number which is the ID of that role. So if we go back to the job board project, here underneath each, each, each role, available role, we've got an ID number for that job. And that is the number, when you click, when you click favorite, that is the number that's being written to the user's favorites table. So we've got there 754698, which is the that particular one so we'll go head over back to Superbase and you'll see 754698 is 
is there now so I haven't got RLS set up on that because I'm still building it as we go so mustn't do that so so anyway that's what I do that that is basically the first instance we are we are writing a random integer of the ID of the item we're favoriting to Superbase and that is how it remembers it so when our when our users sign out and log back in again on their dashboard um, the or wherever you decide to put them you don't you know it could work on any kind of thing any kind of um, system I guess but you know a, a cart whatever it is you're going to use but when the user comes back and logs back in that's how it remembers them on the dashboard because they're all they're coming they're being taken from the user's favorites table right so uh, how are we doing this okay so let's start we've got a app state variable called favorites and it's a list of integers so we need that for storing it locally as well as to the database so we can mirror what we're doing in the database and on the page and I'll explain why in a second and what happens is on page load so this happens both on the search result page and in my instance on the employee the job seeker home page so to populate this correctly and to populate the colors correctly essentially if they're grayed out or not if it's been already selected what we're doing on page load we're just calling this custom action called get favorites and all we're passing into it is the user id now although we're returning uh, a json we're not actually using that we're passing it straight to the app state within the function right so this is the get favorites custom action code uh, now as always these snippets of code both from flutterflow and in superbase will be available in a link down below should you wish to use them in your projects so call and get favorites and the rpc call make into the store procedure is also called get favorites and we're passing in it user id we'll go to the superbase side in a second we're turning the json but the json is a list so it's essentially our our favorites key is nested within the list and it's the only thing in there so therefore it's index zero and we are extracting that to pass it into our favorites app state variable and that's what we're doing so we're taking the elements from our list of favorites and passing them into the app state variable called favorites and that's why we are not using the json response output user favs because we've already done it in the in the procedure so what the get favorites does on the super base side so get favorites and essentially what we're doing we're passing in the user id and we're selecting from the users table the from the favorites column the the, the contents of the favorites column from the users table where the user id equals user id that's all we're doing and return it's exactly the same we're doing with the search function pretty much except obviously this is less to it so that's how that works so when our page loads our application has the app state variable which essentially has in it all the items our users favorited to that point basically so when our page loads so the app knows whether our users users has already favorited them because we're just doing conditional coloring so essentially if our app state contains the item for is basically from basically this id item if it if the app state contains that we are making the we're graying out the button it's still functional because obviously you need to be able to click again to unfavorite it but if it's not been favorited then it's still green so and what happens is on click so when you tap the button essentially again if our app state contains the json response id so the json response is from our search field when we're doing the search in the in the uh, in the search in the search box and we're clicking the search button that's how we get our list of that's how we get our list of in this instance jobs 
So I'll just do that again. When our user clicks you know, keyword and find, that's how we get the list. This is the numbers that are in the app, stored in the update variable and the conditional action on the button color is just checking whether that number is in the update variable. And if it is, it's gray. And if it's not, it's green. So i.e. has the user already favorited it or not? So that's what happens. So if it's true, i.e. Um, when they click the button, if the list does collect, contain the item, we've got a custom action to remove the favorite from the list, which we'll come on to in a second. Then we also update the app state variable. So our user wants to remove data sphere dynamics from the list. So therefore we click the button and we trigger a custom action to remove the favorite and that removes the favorite from the list in Superbase, the column in Superbase, which we'll come on to in a second, but also removing it from the app state variable and then the page state. So if you've seen videos before, this is something I've started doing because it just seems to make things function. When you need something to refresh on page, just have a app state called, uh, sorry, page state called update page and just keep changing the value of it and it and it will refresh the will refresh the view so and the reason we're doing this is because our page is taking the information for what's grayed out and what's green from the update variable that's why we have to move it from the table so when our user navigates around back to the dashboard back to the search results and we're calling the get favorites function and we're populating the update variable initially that's why we have to then remove it from the database so if he goes back to his dashboard then the one that he's removed would be no longer in the update variable because we've also taken out the table and then because we're still on page and our page we're using the, that, the app state basically to control what's happening on page that's where we have to move from the app state as well that's why I've done it. Like I said, this is, I did think of a few ways of doing it and this is the way I ended up with as I was building it. And on false, i.e. if it doesn't contain the item, so therefore if our user wants to favorite it, so therefore if it doesn't contain it and then he's favoriting it, so it goes gray, so it's now favorited. What's happening is we're just doing the exact reverse. We're adding to the, um, custom action to add to the favorites column in the users table and we're adding it to the app state variable for the same reasons because we are controlling the page via the app state variable again once we draw a new page it just just so it that way we're making sure that these are reflecting what's been favorited and what's not essentially so let's go and have a look at the custom code for the remove favorite and add favorite actions and see what they do before we then go and move on to the Superbase side. Right, add favorite. So basically, this doesn't return any value, but we're we're sending in the job ID, which is the integer. So that's the that is the the six digit code that we've randomly created. The random number which we created when we create the job and then we're passing in the user ID so we can get it in the right row in the table obviously so essentially what we're doing here passing those into a function called append fav in superbase and then the remove favorite is essentially the same thing but it's just the exact it does the exact opposite thing so we're passing in the job ID and the user ID calling the remove fav custom uh, SQL function uh, via remote procedure call and all that does is the exact opposite and that just removes something from the favorites column in the user's table. So let's ho head over to Superbase and have a look at those two functions. Right, so append fav, essentially all we're doing, passing in the integer which is the job ID as I've said, the user ID which is UUID in the table which will be the user's UUID, their unique identifier 
and we're updating public users and we're essentially appending the array so as you remember from the beginning the favorites column is an array and all we're doing we are appending the job id to it where the user id equals user id and to remove is essentially exactly the opposite except we're removing from the array the job id where the user id on the table equals the users ui uuid that we've passed in from flutterflow that's basically how it works and it probably sounds a bit complicated but um that's essentially really all it does and if we go to the employee the job seeker home again this button does the exact same thing except this but all you can do with this button is remove your favorite so um and i mean obviously you can do whatever you want with your particular particular apps but um in my instance i've decided that you can only remove the favorite so what happens is when the page loads we're calling get favorites again and if you remember up favorites get favorites updates the app state variable with the items currently within the favorites column and that then sort of displays what's in the list and then if you want to remove them in my instance so you can change however you want but in my instance if you want to remove them whilst on your dashboard you've just got remove the favorite from the, the custom action to remove it from the column in superbase to remove it from the app state so it's controlling what we're doing on this particular page uh, and also um, up again updating the page state so it redraws correctly that's that's basically it so so for instance so if we go back in here go back to the dashboard we've got our list of favorites and if you remember i put in aerosoft dynamics and if we just remove that then it's done it so yeah that's it that's how it works it's um it's not massively complicated it seems it but it's, once you get going it's actually not massively complicated but there's a bit of you know this goes here that goes there we're updating this we're updating that so it does take a bit of thinking about um but hopefully that's explained it well uh, so the code will be available in the link down below so if you have any questions whatsoever put them in the comments hopefully you can put that in your own projects and if you did like that i'd really appreciate a, a thumbs up or a uh or subscribe because you know new channel that massively helps with the almighty algorithm so uh, yes thank you for watching and i will speak to you next time